authorities in the Russian-occupied areas of Ukraine's Donbass region have been encouraging people to vote in what they're calling annexation referenda. Demonstrators in Tehran showed their support for the Iranian regime and the veiling of women after a week of deadly protests. Authorities in the Russian-occupied areas of Ukraine's Donbass region have been encouraging people to vote in what they're calling annexation referendums. In Mariupol and Donetsk, Russian television has filmed these images to portray some form of legitimacy. But a clearer picture of conditions in the region can be seen in Zaporizhia. Russian shelling continues to ravage the Ukrainian side and renewed attacks near the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant are heightening fears of a potential disaster. The world will react absolutely justly to pseudo-referenda. They will be unequivocally condemned and to the criminal mobilization that the occupiers are currently trying to carry out in Crimea and other parts of Ukraine, which they control for now. Moscow is expected to begin the annexation once the result of the so-called votes have been announced. But the U.S. warns it will impose further sanctions if that happens. Video footage released by the Kremlin wants to show citizens willingly enlisting to go to war. This despite widespread demonstrations and social media backlash. And in contrast to queues like this on the land border between Russia and Georgia, where dozens are escaping their fate in Putin's war by any means necessary. Everyone I know is in panic. The majority of people don't know what to do. Many can't leave. More than 70% of the population doesn't have a passport. Since Russia announced the mobilization on Wednesday, one-way tickets out of the country have skyrocketed in price or sold out. The Iranian regime showed its popular support on Friday in Tehran, where hundreds of demonstrators took a stand in favor of the Ayatollahs and the mandatory veiling of women, calling for those who demonstrate against the veil to be executed. Iran's president has compared the protesters to enemies of the state. They want to ride a wave and create riots and disturbances. They think with such moves they can, they can stop the nation. We've announced many times that if anyone has a fair comment, we will listen to it. But anarchy, disturbing national security, the security of people, no one will succumb to this. Following a week of demonstrations over the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini while in police custody, the death toll has risen to 26. Following the path of their compatriots across Iran, dozens of Iranians have protested by cutting their hair and burning hijabs in front of the Iranian embassy in Brussels. No, 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 An outcry no, no. against the regime has also been heard outside the embassy in Norway. Ambulances carrying some of the victims from the deadliest migrant boat tragedy to have hit Lebanon so far. Bodies of some of the 77 people killed when a vessel carrying migrants capsized off the Syrian coast were returned to Tripoli amid outpourings of anger, sorrow and gunfire. Among them, Palestinians, Syrians and Lebanese, who were trying to leave Cyprus. Despite the agony felt by families of the victims, many here maintain that conditions in the region are driving people to attempt the same perilous journeys. They reached a point where they wanted to die at sea. They said this, we want to die at sea. Trips could continue to happen. What do they want here? Me, if the boat came here now, I would go. There's no livelihood. There's no work. There's no future. We are trapped. The some 20 migrants who managed to survive the shipwreck are now being cared for in Syria. Along the Bulgarian-Turkish border, a partial state of emergency has been announced as authorities try to deal with what they're calling a refugee wave. Officials say the measures have been put in place to prevent deaths, property damage and repair forest roads leading to the border crossing.
Bulgaria says the number of migrants trying to enter is growing daily. Most often they cross our border with leathers which they use to jump over the fence. At the moment we have done everything possible and necessary. We have active assistance from the Turkish side, so after the meetings I had with the Turkish interior minister and the Greek interior minister, the coordination is much better now, the mutual assistance between the services of the different countries is much better. The minister says they'll be closely monitoring those also trying to cross by boat. Migrants departing from the Turkish coastline hope to reach Bulgaria or neighbouring Romania, both member states of the European Union. Earlier this year, the Human Rights Watch claimed Bulgarian authorities were beating, robbing, stripping and using police dogs to attack asylum seekers and migrants. The country did not respond to the report's findings. Italy's far right is hoping for success after heavily campaigning for Sunday's election. The far right politician Giorgia Meloni could become Italy's prime minister, a first since World War II. Meloni and her brothers of Italy party have made God, nation and family as part of their main pillars of their campaign. Meloni's main alliance partners are La Lega, a populist party with leader Matteo Salvini, but also former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia party. The left bloc, led by former Prime Minister Enrico Letta, theoretically could beat Meloni, however he has no majority. And given the group's internal divisions and poor showing in polls, the chances the left will win on Sunday are looking slim. At the EU level, these elections could be seen as a test case for whether the hard right sentiment is gaining more traction across the 27 nation bloc. Thousands protested around the world for more action against climate change. The Friday for Future Youth movement demanded more aid for poorer nations, particularly those hit by violent weather. The demonstrations are against the backdrop of warnings from scientists that leaders aren't doing enough. We need climate protection right now because we see that we have an energy crisis right now because we continue to rely on fossil fuels and this will only increase in the future if decisive action is not taken now. Marches took place in 70 Italian cities just days before the country heads to the polls for its upcoming general election. As we also saw in the electoral programs, there are very few issues about the climate and its safeguards. What we hope to do is to finally realize a total ecological transition. Scientists argue that governments aren't taking enough action to meet the 2015 Paris Climate Accord's targets to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial temperatures. Earlier this week, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres told world leaders that the fossil fuel industry is feasting on profits and subsidies while our planet burns. The London Gallery wants to highlight important female artists who have not achieved the recognition they deserve, and Maria Bartusheva is the ideal one. The Prague-born Slovakian artist made wildly experimental and abstract art under the nose of the communist authorities. With plaster and paper, but also with bronze and aluminium, she shaped sculptures by pushing, pulling or submerging them into water, creating unique and distinct shapes. 20,000 objects, among them dozens of Benin bronzes sculptures, are going on display for one last time in Berlin's new Humboldt Museum before being repatriated to Nigeria. Many of them date from the 16th to the 18th centuries. Taken during the colonial era from the African Kingdom of Benin, the move is part of the country's gradual reckoning with crimes committed by the former German Empire. Retracing Kokash's seven decades of image making, the exhibition highlights the artist's originality as we accompany him through Europe's 20th century. Painter, writer, playwright and poet, Kokash stands for his committed role in the artistic and intellectual upheavals of the early 20th century Vienna. 
and then as a fierce opponent of the fascist and Nazi regime. Contemporary of Egon Schiele and Gustav Klimt, he became the Infant Terrible of Vienna.